Uh, my name is Sarah Loudon. I'm with the Seattle Art Museum as director of the Gardner Center for Asian Art and Ideas. And I'm so glad to have you joining us this evening. We're uh, really excited about this event. Hi, thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Hung, and everybody who's here tonight joining us. Um, it has uh, been such a pleasure to work with the uh, Asian Art Museum and <clears throat> Sarah in putting this uh, series together. And I'm really, really honored and excited for tonight's program and to be able to have an in-depth conversation with Hung Lu. Um, you know, uh, Hung, as a, as a documentary filmmaker, a lot of my stories have been about the experience of immigrants. And I think that's probably what drew me to your work um, when I first started seeing your work. Um, so it's, you know, so welcome, Hung. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. So, um, Hung, you were born and raised in China during the Mao, Chairman Mao's regime. Um, so tell us about what it was like when you were growing up there. Um, the reason I wanted to start back there is I think it's really, um, it really informed the, your work, your body of work, uh, you know, from up till this point. So tell us a little bit about what it was like when you were growing up in China. Yeah, we can start, start with the first uh, 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 image, and uh, I, when I was a young adult, just uh, about graduating that time from a high school, uh, so-called the Cultural Revolution happened. That's uh, 1966. You can see the revolutionary movement and uh, the, all the, you know, authority, you know, authorities like from. Uh, school te uh, teachers even, you know, all got uh, uh, criticized, even physically abused. That's the time, the, 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 the kind of, a, you, if you say socialist realism, the propaganda paintings like uh, the great leader there, and then the, the Red Guards, the, the, you know, the, the revolutionary uh, young people and the workers, the peasants, the soldiers all there in front of the team and that's the kind of work we're supposed to do. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the next one is, uh, can we go, yeah, and then uh, of course, uh, uh, all the, you know, uh, ideologies, anything. Now, if non-proletarian, non-Marxism, Leninism, or Muslim's uh, idea all destroyed. Now, we, two years into the Cultural Revolution, all the young the school closed and not, nothing, nothing else, you know, the young people could do. So there's like a really chaotic situation. So Mao Zedong decided to send us to the countryside. Uh, I was, that's what, uh, when I was in the countryside for four years in a village at, at two rivers, that's a, a photogram from then, that time. And uh, uh, during that time, you, there was no weekend, there's no, there was no wage for, for, for peasants. You just work day in, day out. Maybe a few days off during Chinese New Year time, which is most time late January, February, winter time. So uh, I, I believe I have a few joints. Uh, when I had a break time, they're very hard to find, find paper even. I did so, a, you know, I want to just, uh, so the re-education, it was a, government program in China to send people to countryside to be... Well, people who got a wrong education because they supposed to cultural revolution to mm -hmm. get rid of all the non proletarian ideology. So mm -hmm. uh, from a junior high, which is like 13 years old, all the way to college, university students, we got the wrong you know, education, we need to be re-educated. Later on, expanded to anybody, all the intellectuals, from uh, writers and uh, poets and artists uh, uh, to even, you know, uh, musicians, uh, even scientists, anybody who, you know, intellectual, called intellectual, the, 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 uh, you know, right. you get educated, you need to be re-educated. And this is you at, uh, when you were working the there in, in the countryside. The village and, I, I was right. sent to. And, and that's uh, when you first started creating, uh, you know. I always like, just you know, young age, I have a 
drawing when I, I did when I was one, five years old. That was not a, I do, uh, uh, not an art training, but I just did my sketch during the break, a few minutes break, and uh, that's uh, how hard it worked. And then I, I, nobody had the camera in China then, and uh, a college friend who, because they got a more educated, the bad education, so they be the, need to be re-educated more severely in a, a military labor camp. So I, I happened to keep a camera for one of them. Mm -hmm. So that's an old German 120 camera. That's what was the countryside. I took the pictures, which self-taught. I never learned how to, 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 to use camera. That's the, some of the photos I took. When I was right there with them as, as the, one of the peasants. Peasants, yeah. So early on, we're seeing your interest in photography. Yes, yeah, and that camera also, I, I felt like a, uh, that some uh, uh, peasants said that called that the magic box because it somehow captures something. And then, you know, so I, I learned even how to develop in the, uh, you know, dark room, which is I, I didn't have. I, 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 I painted the, 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 the light bulb red as a safety light bulb and then uh, uh, developed something and uh, set, gave to the peasants. Even many years later, I, I visited them. Some of them still kept that the photograph I took because nobody cared about that. And then two, four years after cultural, <coughs> after re-education the countryside, I had a chance to return to school, Beijing, Beijing Teachers College. But that time still, cultural revolution still going on. This is the kind of painting we, we expect to, to do. The and that's, uh, that's what, you know, socialist realism, exactly. that's what you were trained in. Yeah, realism. It's not the same as social realism. Yeah, realism is a style. It's just like, I see if everything so realism, uh, so realistic, but the socialism is the, the label, the political label. And the way, that's is my sketch of uh, us in the college, during the college time, we did a lot of billboard. This particular one is uh, Iron Man. Uh, Iron Man, Wang, Wang, Wang Tiren, Iron Man. And the, Can you say a little bit about what is socialist realism, just briefly? So socialist realism is uh, uh, we adopted from uh, a Soviet Union, formal, mm -hmm. formerly Soviet Union. And the realism is really from the, you know, from Europe, from uh, Renaissance time to friend, you know, friends. This is realism. This is a particular thing. It's like a, a realistically portrayed, you know, whatever human figures mm -hmm. or landscape. But the socialist is the political label, you know. And so you're supposed to do everything, uh, you know, realistic, but with a political revolutionary subject matter. So I think it's, a, to me, more like socialist surrealism because uh, the things are so surreal, not in real life. And this is uh, uh, one of the billboard, there's a called the Iron Man, right? You know, and we, we do that. And also, even at uh, that time, during my college time, revolution still going on because for 10 years, uh, there were only eight performances allowed to be on stage. Later on, became a movie, like a picking opera, revolutionary picking opera, ballet. And the, the, uh, on the right uh, lower corner, you can see that then uh, American um, President Nixon visited China in 1972. And his wife, and uh, in uh, company with the Mao Zedong's wife, Jiang Qing on the right hand side, to watch revolutionary ballet, which is uh, the left ones called the Red Detachment of Women, all women soldiers. You know, when I was young, I, I watched the whole show from Soviet Union. Uh, mm -hmm. Swan Lake was the ballet I thought, but now it's all revolutionized. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then during the time, uh, uh, college time, we still did a lot of uh, work. It's the subject matter, you know, it's uh, workers, peasants, or soldiers. And we were in countryside still many times in the factories. And I'll just show you uh, some, uh, you know, like the countryside drawings. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
going forward. I think it's backward. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, yeah. During the uh, during that time, I you, you can see I have a little, very small painting box. I could hide in, in you know in my bag. And the, the school outside the school was the countryside suburb. So I did a, a quite a few, almost one painting a day of a landscape, because that's a, even landscape. You know that time landscape is apolitical. Is apolitical is a, it's not it's not allowed because you have to be with the revolution. So I secretly did quite a few. This uh, uh, yeah, I think a lot of loss. Not only thirty five survive mm -hmm. and not so, and in the asset mama collection. And these are you call them secret freedom because you weren't technically you weren't allowed to openly paint this. You were doing this yeah, because your subject matter is supposed to be revolution mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, and that's called the socialist realism. Why you do a, a water, a, a river, a landscape without a human? Where are the pe uh, where are the revolution? Where are the happy people? Where are the great leaders? So that that's uh, uh, not allowed. That's why I call the sacred freedom. And then we come to you know you immigrated and, uh, to the United I, uh, States. That was uh, thirty six years ago. Uh, I waited for this passport for four years because uh, China uh, would not allow anybody to leave China. I got accepted by uh, the graduate school of UC San Diego. And, and uh, so waited for four years for my passport finally. And with that passport, first time I got out of China, but also visited uh, in 1990, I visited uh, uh, the 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 uh, Venus Biennale at the Soviet Union then still pavilion. I I met uh, Robert Rauschenberg. So with my Chinese passport, first of all, I waited for four years. Secondly, even with the Chinese passport, you visit Europe, you have to get visas from every single country. So I I, I saw him. I said that with. You know, I'm a Chinese artist. In order to visit here, I have to go through all this. And he flipped through my passport. I said that I have to, in order to get that, the visa, all the visas to say, to say R. And then he, the next one, uh, next, and he said, uh, he looked at and said, well, this is your passport, uh, this is your visa to the art world. So he signed his name on my passport. Yes, so this is your actual passport that he signed. Yes, that's my Chinese yeah. passport. So I have it now. So then in terms yeah. of, uh, uh, it's a very interesting thing about, uh, you talk about identity. We always mm -hmm. say, can I see your ID? Can I see your ID? From a driver license to passport. Now, uh, after I was granted a green card, you know, I... I, but my green card that time I got it's not it's not green nothing green but uh, the title of my card is called a resident alien. Uh, mm -hmm. That time mm -hmm. just so happened all the alien movie all the alien <laughs> movie started to, to 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 show everywhere. I said what is alien because uh, English not my first language. So I looked up alien is somebody from somewhere else. You know mm -hmm. it's like a look at the alien movie all the aliens you know so i felt, felt so strange about this uh, this my id is a uh, resident legal residence yet alien so i thought that this is moron kind of things uh, so i did a lot of uh, on my postcard on um, my, my oh, like almost like a big poster size we see uh, a large uh, yeah that's uh, that's back to 1988 when i did uh, this uh, is one of the pieces for uh, residency program at Cap Street, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And also I, I realized that uh, poaching cookie was not invented by Chinese, not invented by Yun Chinese American. And uh, this, this is at the time I did a big project like a mm -hmm. Chinese named uh, one of the streets in San Francisco, Chinatown, uh, Sacramento, like Tang Ren Jie means, uh, you know, Tang People Street, Tang Dynasty is, uh, one of the glories like Chinese Renaissance. So I did, this is the installation sh shot of my resident alien that, that the, the, pro the, the short project. And the first time I used the, 
10,000 fortune cookies as, yes. uh, you know, as uh, they're mm. as offering. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, uh, 94, that means uh, eight years later, well, I had a chance to do a, a show at the San Francisco Diang Museum. Uh, I, you know, I, I did a, a, a I re did a more research Chinese uh, Americans got to this country uh, mm -hmm. from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. They were first not allowed to come to, to join the gold rush until later, but um, a lot of Chinese uh, workers actually work on the railroad. Right, yeah. And last year was 150th uh, anniversary of the mm -hmm. completion of uh, continental America. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Chinese, a lot of Chinese workers, you can see in the picture, they mm -hmm. built the uh, Union Pacific West, going through a lot of uh, really, uh, uh, you know, tough area like uh, Sienna, Nevada, you know, use explosive. And when they connect the finally, 150 years ago from last year, and the Chinese not even the picture, Chinese workers completely forgotten. Mm -hmm. So uh, then I, uh, uh, that's that's something that's very you know important part of the history in the Northwest too. The Chinese Americans have been here for a very long time. And, uh, Even Stanford, uh, Leland Stanford, uh, 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 you know, uh, built you uh, know, founded Stanford University. Mm -hmm. A lot of the money he made is from railroad, you know. So I uh, and even last year, well, 150th anniversary in the Golden uh, Spike, uh, Utah. Sanford, Nevada Museum, all had a memorial kind of, a, you know, uh, activities to commemorate all the Chinese workers, railroad workers. This is uh, in 1994 uh, at the Diang Museum. Instead of 10,000 uh, poaching cookies, this installation, I used over 200,000 poaching cookies. The reason I use that because uh, Chinese translation of uh, San Francisco uh, is is called the old Jiu uh, Jin Shan old gold mountain. So I use uh, the fortune cookie form uh, of you know fictitious gold mountain, mm -hmm. and also the use the railroad track. The, this this picture is actually uh, took uh, uh, two thousand thirteen. That was like uh, twenty nine years later when I had my, my retrospective at the Oakland Museum Mills College redid. Uh, my fortune cookie mountain and, and this is at the mills college art museum and yeah. uh, uh I, I then also i am interested in uh, uh, my, my relationship with photography i felt like uh, the olden days uh, not a lot of people had, had had not maybe none of the people really have uh, cameras so uh, who had a camera also think about uh, uh, use the word shooting, you know, you shoot a photo. It's very violent. It's like a, in your face. It's, it's, it's a, the, the camera lens really, you know, shooting at you. So this is a few Chinese uh, profiles I did uh, based on John Thompson's uh, 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 photograph of Chinese when it, he uh, published a book at the end of uh, 19th century called uh, through China with a camera. He called those Chinese types, you know. So I, I want to reclaim those uh, Chinese faces. But uh, what I in, I'm interested in also, because of profile, the, mm -hmm. the women in these photographs, the subject not returning the gaze, especially the male, the foreign gaze. Can you talk a little bit about the technique? Um, and also, you know, one of your signature uh, style is oh, the, sure. the dripping sure. uh, paint. Can you talk but, a little uh, bit? First of all, I, uh, from uh, one media to the other, I didn't want to copy the photograph. I made uh, the, the painting, you can say, 80 by 80 inches, rather really large size, in size. Secondly, because of photography, especially historical photography, they in black white. I I decided to put the color in. What what color? You know, I use my experience, use my uh, you know the uh, uh, imagination, and mm -hmm. also 
photography in, in, in time, and especially the chemical age, sometimes the photograph uh, deteriorated, you know, like a decayed. And it's like our memory, like our, mm -hmm. the, the, the history, you know, it's a mm -hmm. kind of a decaying in time and a lot of forgotten. So I felt like I uh, uh, used the washes when I painted a, a, a perfect face. Sometimes you wash away. It's mm -hmm. like a more appropriate to the subject because uh, it's like uh, the, the forgotten history. You know, I, the, I liked, um, I think I yeah, read that you said you, with your work, you are preserving and also, you know, destroying the images, the photographs. Absolutely. I think the whole, you see sometimes the truth of the history. With the truth is that we never know the whole truth. Like the woman's real identity I lost, but I wanted to preserve their memory. You know, in, especially when you show it in public place, you cannot deny their face. They, they, like this, uh, uh, another, no, uh, some, another uh, series of work I did is of uh, Chinese in America, like the other one called uh, Holy Bemis in, from Idaho. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, China Mary from Wyoming. I always incorporate some, uh, something from a Chinese traditional painting, but this one with a uh, Wyoming state bird. Mm -hmm. So she's, uh, it's, you are an uh, uh, immigrant like myself. It's not a, you're not a pure Chinese anymore, but uh, mm -hmm. you relocated in the US, so I have another life. So it's always, uh, you know, like, a, the, 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 the two, uh, two of your two parts of identity. I wanna, uh, I'm gonna keep us moving just to stay on time. Sure. Um, and I really am interested in talking to you about your work, you know, so it, what, you move from China, primarily Chinese subject to American subject, and then you, you see, um, you, you know, your work influenced by Dorothea Lange's photographs. So, that's what we're looking at now. Yeah, from a Chinese subject like this, and then we move on to the next one. And, you know, working women, especially refugees. And then I think this is like a Chinese refugee, um, you know, the, uh, after war, after, uh, you know, famine. Then the Chinese uh, migrant mother is not too much different from this American migrant mother. They breastfeeding baby, they try to, you know, to survive and to raise their children. And so I, I think that to me, maybe also I've been long in U.S., long enough, I feel like a, a U.S. history is also part of our history. You know, we share that. So this is based on our DLN's images. We can just go through fast. I can can you say what attracted you to Dorothea Lange's uh, photography? I think it's, uh, it's the human condition, you mm -hmm. know, the epic history of uh, uh, one of the, in my catalog, one of the writer uh, uh, from LA, they, he spent days to figure out the title of his essay, he said, uh, domestic refugee, because one today we say refugee, or Middle East, oh, it's uh, Asia, you know, but I think we have a lot of refugees during that time, the hardest time, Great Depression, you know, and uh, so children start working when they when they're very young and uh, people struggling. But also I feel it's relevant to today. It's not uh, like a history in the past. I really feel, you know, still resonant to what we are going through today, uh, worldly and uh, nation nationally, internationally. So we can we can go faster and uh, just all and and also the Asian images, the Japanese Americans sending away, you know, during in, in after the uh, Pearl Harbor. I, I I read something that you said which you really um, stuck with me. You said you're working to uncover the cultural and personal narratives uh, fixed but often concealed in the photographs. So. Tell, tell me a little bit about that. I think it's a Dorothea uh, Lance photograph. A lot of people, even though they have a very concrete face, you know, they're, they're, they're right there, but also most of them, uh, you don't know exactly 
you know, their identities, also their stories. I felt like uh, like discovering Chinese, uh, you know, uh, old historical photograph. I felt like uh, when I was doing research, looking into the photographs uh, she took, it's almost through her lens, I almost felt like I had a first-hand experience because mm -hmm. of the experience of me working the countryside. And almost I felt they did not too much different from the poor Chinese peasants. Their children without a good, without a clothes, you know, with shabby clothes, no food. I, I feel like this, uh, this human condition, pretty much is human struggle, very much the same. So we want to go talk about what you've That's been working. I work in my studio, but uh, one of the end also, I want to just uh, throw in uh, an interesting part of uh, when I was at the graduate school, my uh, uh, my focus was a mural painting. That's why I got a chance to visit the, the famous Dunhuang caves along the old Silk Road. That's when I in, at the graduate school. Uh, 79 to 81, and the, our our standard thing is the Western style, like the news we did, like the models. But the one I went to the Dunhuang Cave, the next slide you could see, you know, there's a, a, a start from fourth century, in the middle of the Gobi Desert, many many hundreds of caves, like a cave mural inside, and uh, so we. Uh, when we were studying it and copying it was in the cave, inside the cave, no electricity on the ground. I did a, quite a few, like a, I, I, I really, you know, did a lot of, not just simple like copying. I sometimes, I collage images together like this on rice paper. And uh, you can go faster. So this one, this was done in 1980. You said inside the exactly. cave without light. Exactly 40 years ago, like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and then it just so happened when David Hockney visited China, we visited my school, Central Academy of Fine Art. And uh, I years later, I realized I was in his book. That's a photograph of me, my fellow graduate student. I was so young then. And he said, <laughs> he asked us to show him uh, our work. Uh, and then I showed my Dunhuang Cave paintings. And he said, he somehow he called, he called me Mrs. Liu. <laughs> with large cartoons and the drawings on, and the parenthesis, rather unexpectedly religious themes, uh, mm -hmm. illustrated the life of Buddha. This surely, I thought, would not have been per permitted during the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, so, that's uh, from so that's his book. You in that photograph. I was a photograph of his book called The China Diary. Then when the, uh, you know, 40 years later, when uh, the, uh, you know, coronavirus in, in, in just uh, spread in, in the U.S. and when California started this called a shelter in place order, and uh, somehow the first thing I felt like, you know, I want to do something when I was uh, sheltered at my studio. So that's what uh, I, I, I start doing. Uh, um, you know, the so next one is the image based on my Buddhist cave 40 years ago, some, uh, you know, on rice paper, small, uh, you know, you, you call garage, I did some big paintings, like the other one, 80 by 80. This is, a, I think, almost 10 foot. It's all about the prayer. I felt like uh, I want the prayer for, for us, for myself, for, 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 for us, for, for the United States, for the whole world. So this is the uh, most recent paintings I did. Um, this is, uh, it's, it's so, you know, apt for our time because that's the state we're in, right? The state of uncertainty and, and we're all in our own ways praying and for hope and hopeful future and, you know, getting past this pandemic. And also, you know, the, um, we're at a pivotal moment right now in our country with the Black Lives Matter movement. So this work to me um, really speaks to the condition we're in right now, where we're all locked in in our houses. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think uh, there's something about uh, I, my, my gift to, to myself. I also, I was doing this uh, connect, 
like forty some years ago without uh, this uh, <laughs> shelter in place. I don't know if I have ever had a chance to revisit it somehow. On one hand, I'm still working on the Great Depression. That's more like, a, if you say, realistic style. But this, for me, in some way, is, is a prayer. It's more spiritual. It's more about, you know, something we, we are hopeful. And that's that's the piece we see behind you. That's the actual piece right now. Oh, yeah, now, right, right? right now. You can, can you see me? Yeah, yes, that's yes. <laughs> Yeah, so we no, see, we get a, a sense of the size of the, the painting. Yeah, 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 right. Mm -hmm. I think we're done, right? That's yeah. my prayer. That's yeah. so my this, prayer there, you know, for, for, for everybody. Yeah. So I see a question. Can you say something about your parents and the early family life? If oh, artists, that's a long story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe briefly, if artists were being re-educated, did you have to hide your art or were you encouraged to create and practice? So I think this... When you, uh, when we were sent to be re-educated, you know, you really didn't have any time to do your art. And uh, because I, I, I could draw, I could do some... Uh, the, 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 the finally the commune, the, that time called the people's commune, the party leaders, so I had uh, some skill. So I, I, I took a couple of uh, working days in the field. I did some uh, revolutionary, almost propaganda thing outside uh, some, some buildings, you know, like uh, the revolutionary Peking opera, a hero doing this. I remember I did a couple of those, but uh, otherwise you, you don't have time to do your art. You, the reason you need to be re-educated is use the physical labor to get rid of all your bad, you know, bad influence. You know, you need to be re-educated not uh, by doing art, by physical labor. That's the truth everywhere. So the work you were doing early on, you, like you said, you were doing it secretly. Yeah, that's, that was uh, what already returned from, from uh, countryside. I was in college, that's already. Mm -hmm. Countryside, there's no way, there's no time. And I see uh, another question. What inspired you to go to China, uh, to, to leave China and go to the U.S. when the art scene in the U.S. was so dramatically different? I, uh, that time, I just thought that in China, uh, there's... Uh, you know, you only could uh, see so much. I one of my favorite things, not the books. You can say, I I since a young age, I love maps. When you look at the maps, you you know some I love like a, a you know the Sahara or oh, desert. Oh my God! You start having your imagination. You start to think about the. 1001 nights and you re read like a, oh the Boston Museum oh they have a Chinese uh, ancient mural or statue but when you read that you always want to see it and uh, of course in China that time was impossible uh, when I was in uh, uh, middle school we all the schools I remember uh, studied the foreign language was Russian because uh, only a few people in the end might be able to go to Soviet Union, the so-called overseas study. There's no other place that you could go out of the country. So when I thought I had a chance, I felt like I want to see a bigger world. I want, as an artist, I want to um, not just look at the map. I want to see the museum, the Metropolitan Museum. I want mm -hmm. to see you know others other sky other just open up i felt artists that's uh, my right but of course you know it, it was uh, almost impossible uh, some many years ago there's some questions about your work based on dorothea lange's uh, photographs so um can you talk a little bit about you know um uh, what did what did you learn while we're looking through Dorothea Lange's photographs? And did you look at all her work? And what you know what inspired you to keep 
following I her can team. focus on um, her Great Depression basketball, you know, photographs. And she took so many, one thing I, I really, many things, she, she's my hero, hero as a woman carrying that time heavy equipment drove to the worst possible, you know, camps and, uh, and the field to photograph people in the, in the, in the hardship. And, and uh, also I heard that she allowed children to talk to people, not just you as my subject, I, I, I just uh, have some snapshot go. She talked to people and she even let the children touch her camera with their dirty fingers. I love that. And also she said that she didn't want just to show the hardship they're going through, but rather their re resilience, their strength and their spirit. Then I feel like uh, I love to use her image to, you know, show, to show people's dignity. And uh, another story is uh, how she photographed the famous, most famous uh, my grandmother which becomes an emblem of the, the Great Depression. She photographed a long time and she was ready to go home to Berkeley when she drove by on, 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 on highway then by a camp, dark, not electric, nothing. 20 miles later, she thought, I want to see what's there. So she made U-turn. So the mm -hmm. next morning, she talked to people. She photographed the most famous uh, mind brain mother. She took seven of those shots. What I like is as an artist, uh, a lot of times uh, you think you're done, you're not. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to make a U-turn. You have to travel the extra, extra miles to do your work. And uh, regardless how you think you're done, how you're tired you might you think you, you, you fail, but I just felt like a, she was a, my hero, truly. There is a um, question about can, uh, what is the significance of circles, circles in some of your work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, circles, it's, uh, you know, everybody almost can do it. But in the Zen Buddhism, it's like, a, it's about the no beginning, no the end. The, 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 the end means the beginning. So it's like a infinity. To me also, it's, it's a, 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 a kind of stroke I make. It's a, in Chinese written language, the end of a sentence, we, we say period, it's a, a dot in English, but in Chinese, it's tiny circle. You know, it's a hollow, it's not a dot. So I feel mm -hmm. like a, a, my punctuation is like, also you think about the circle, it's like a, not a real, not a realist thing. What does it mean? I think like an untold story, like thought bubbles, like, like a, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, the, 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 it's an uncertain. It's about something still flowing there, you know. So interrupt the realistic, if you say, photo, uh, you know, picture plane. So I like that it's, and it could be, in different sizes, different colors, you know, it's a stroke. Um, I wanted to get back to, you know, a lot of your work, um, uh, women, um, Chinese women, feminist images, those are very prominent in a lot of your work. Um, and it's based on historical photographs. So actually there is a question here also. Um, how did you find those photographs of Chinese women and who were, uh, who were probably sex workers? Um, and, uh, so, so how did you find those? Just a research, it's very hard because the uh, uh, Cultural Revolution, all the old, uh, a lot of books so, uh, burned, photograph destroyed, even family photo albums destroyed. So you just uh, have, uh, I found uh, some, sometimes just uh, by chance, by luck, it's uh, completely, um, you know, uh, by accident, friends, friends, friends. I said, oh, well, I look for all the photograph. Then the the, uh, the prostitute photograph I found in the film uh, studio archives. It's like a dump in the cardboard box. Mm -hmm. So one photograph. I said, I don't know any old. So I, I just think uh, when you dig out, sometimes you never know what you can find. 
you know, keep digging. I found some photographs actually in a thrift shops. In America, sometimes like family photos. Somebody, but after two generations, people said, who are those people? You know, I saw immigrants from a different part of the world. Their old photographs out there. Sometimes baby photographs. I just feel like uh, they all, in some way, they all lost. Uh, you know, that's why in uh, uh, 2020, uh, 2013, my retrospective title is uh, Summoning Ghosts because uh, those uh, 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 subjects in the old photograph, a lot of them are anonymous, uh, lost their story, their memory are lost. I feel like uh, I'm like a witch from the East, Summoning Ghosts. My, my painting, my painting picture plan is, uh, is their memorial site. They need to be remembered. What do you, um, when you go through photographs, what are you looking for? What speaks to you? You know, what makes I you select a photograph? I don't have a particular say I'm looking for a woman's face, a children's, whatever. I just uh, go through a lot. I think uh, uh, doing this research is uh, you educate yourself. You, the more you learn, the more, you know, you want to learn. It's, it's, a, it's a self, uh, uh, a kind of a, uh, 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 educate education. I learned so many terms uh, from uh, uh, the Great Depression, like a uh, 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 you know, uh, bindo stiff, like a uh, you even still people use it today in the south, like a sharecropper, like John Lewis' mother was share was a sharecropper. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Uh, so I learned a lot of, by not just the terms, but the history of it. Mm -hmm. And you're preserving that in your work. I think we need to remember this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question about the, the last uh, prayer painting that you showed. Um, could you say something about the river and the large creatures in the bottom corner with the teeth? I thought the river reminds me a little bit of, uh, I think, Clement having this life and death, like a river, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, some people, you know, still alive. Some like like a like a reincarnation or a life cycle of life. And to me, there's a figure so like swimming there. But also, there's a little boat, like vehicles, people riding on that. And on both sides, there are a lot of uh, like faceless, uh, you know, uh, souls like praying for people up and down in this river, life and death. So I, I think that's a, to me, it's a very mysterious and uh, also maybe a lot to do with the uncertainty unknown about our this life, last life or next life. You know, it's like the cycle of life. Mm -hmm. well, um, uh, Sarah, can we do a couple of more questions? Is that okay? So there is a, so this is back to your, you know, youth again. Did your parents encourage you to make art prior to the Cultural Revolution? Mm, in China, I think uh, learning art is, uh, unless you have uh, some family background, and then you have uh, that time, my time at least. And uh, even though I love uh, painting, drawing, join the club, uh, uh, you know, but uh, I was uh, a <laughs> um, advice or maybe just the uh, really told by my family um you know our artist is not a real you know career you know you can always do spare time you know you, the real you, you have to be real so my i was supposed to go to a medical school mm. i supposed to be a doctor <laughs> i want to save people's life be a surgeon that's what i was you know supposed to do but uh, one thing I have to say, thank you, Cultural Revolution threw me in the mud, then I come back to the art. So I think uh, that's, uh, you, you, you just never know, but I'm so glad uh, I'm an artist. Uh, Doctor is good, I admire, I even talked to a friend of my age, over 70, said, listen, if we were doctor, do you think we would go to the front line mm -hmm. you know, to save people today? And then we both said, yes, absolutely, we would do it. Mm -hmm. There's a question, have you gone back to CAFA, C -A -F -A, recently, uh, perhaps to talk to students? 
Have you gone back there to, you know, speak about your work? Oh, I have done a lot of those. I even last last year or year before I, I'm being oh last year I'm being I, I was Stanford, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as a residency talking meet with the graduate student one on one, and I cannot remember 30, 40 minutes each. Then went to Utah and went to a lot of places. I because of, I'm from a full generation uh, teachers family, and. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel that's in my blood, my DNA. I, 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 I need Chinese, we have a phrase. The teacher is a colleague, you are a gardener. You plant trees, Tao is the peach trees and the plum trees, and then the flowers all over the world. Mm -hmm. I have students really, I have students, graduates in all over the world, from Asia mm -hmm. to all the other countries. So I think uh, that's a part of who I am, even though I'm retired, but mm -hmm. I feel like a, as even artists share my work with the young generation. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Are you able to, you know, you're a world-renowned Chinese-American artist. Are you able to go back to China now? I mean, before the pandemic, of course. Yeah. I, I and, showed and the, speak uh, about your work? I showed in, the, uh, in China quite a bit before 2000 before 2010 or 11 mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, I, I talked, I gave lecture there too. But last year, December, I supposed to have a big show at That's the right. Atlanta Center and then the show was censored, you know, because of some, uh, I guess some of my work so dangerous because mm -hmm. not uh, along the socialist realism line and, uh, and uh, can overthrow some, uh, you know, something so right. this was the December 2019 show that was just a, just the last December yeah. you know it's yeah. uh, before me they showed a, a Picasso the biggest show in in, in in China Picasso from France and then and then uh, Matthew Barney I think either your dad white man or your uh, your black white <laughs> white man doesn't matter but it, it really scattered bad Chinese woman returned to China so that that was the last <laughs> last is supposedly a big show, yeah. Well, thank you so much. This has been so amazing to see your work and to learn, you. you know, firsthand from you, your story. And thank you to everybody who's here. I'm gonna pass it back to Sarah for some closing remarks. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Hi. thank you, Lila. Thank you can you. hear me? Yes, Great. we hear you. Thank Great. You. Well, a big thanks to both of you, uh, Hang Lu and Lila Cosby. This has been just a great conversation. And uh, Hung, your work is just so rich. Um, you explore so many different directions in it. And what you have to say, I've heard you speak a number of times now, and there's always more, just as there's always more in your artwork. And I really appreciate you. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. I, I do. So um, if any of you are interested in seeing more of her work, please look for her website, uh, hunglu.com, H-U-N-G-L-I-U.com. And don't forget to include Washington, D.C. in your travel plans next year so you can see her work in person at the National Portrait Gallery. And then uh, to close, I'll just mention our next series will be on color in Asian art. Uh, which will be a great series of seven talks starting in early October. And just keep an eye on the SAM uh, e-news to find out more about that. And um, thanks again for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.